My name is Don Booth, and uh, myself and my partner, who may join us partway through, um, came up with the idea for this website. And I'll uh, try to go through uh, the conception and actually building it, strategy, where we are now, things like that. Um, what I'll say before we start, um, well, what I should do actually is um, should ask, what what are your main, what are what are you looking for here? I like I'm I'm a this was my first WordPress WordPress site. Um, I'm really uh, not an advanced programmer at all, so I'm not going to talk about the details of programming. So if that's what you're looking for, well, this isn't, I can't, I'm the worst person to get it from. Um, so um, is, is there anyone here who's, who has political experience who's worked on a campaign? Okay. Um, uh, I, you know, any t if, if questions, comments, Please stop me along the way. Um, uh, yeah, I've never given one of these presentations before, so please bear with me. Um, so the the reason the reason we decided this time to act and to get very involved is that for us. Uh, this election is different from any other election. Um, the difference between Harper's Conservatives and all the other parties for us seem to be an enormous, there seemed to be an enormous chasm. Um, and the, uh, ma made it not so hard to vote for anybody but the Harper government. Um, and we ran into it almost right away. We ran into examples of, of how Harper has changed government almost right away. Um, one of the first things that we needed to do is we needed to be able to, uh, people needed to be able to find which riding they live in. Um, all but 30 ridings have been changed. They were gerrymandered. Um, all the ridings were changed in sometimes subtle, sometimes not so subtle ways, hi Carmel, uh, to give the conservatives an advantage. 30 new ridings were created and I believe in all 30 ridings. Carmel is the, the data expert uh, in the two of us and I was more the website. So um, if I say things and I'm wrong, please correct me. Um, but in, in, in the redistricting, there were 30 new ridings created, and all 30 ridings are created in such a way as to give the conservatives an advantage in those ridings. Um, as, I, as we started to build the website, and I, I needed some kind of an API so that people can put in their address um, or their postal code, um, and Elections Canada, you can go to Elections Canada and type that into their website, but I said, do you have some kind of an API that I can um, uh, uh, tap into? Uh, can we scrape your site? And they said, no, please don't, please don't. And my understanding of when we created government, we realized that government was there to do things for us. Um, and that when we pay to develop things like the Elections Canada website, that the services and the data that's available there were there for us to be used. Um, it, it got much worse with postal codes. I don't, um, when you, uh, election boundaries often do not cut, uh, often cut through, um, writing boundaries cut through postal codes. So if you type in your postal code, it might be wrong, um, or exactly, uh, Canada Post will not for free give you the boundaries of the postal codes. Um, and, but they do offer service so that you can submit a postal code and they'll give you data back, but they charge at a minimum 6.5 cents per query. Um, yes. That's, it's, it's Google um, guessing. Um, and, when, and if you type in an actual address, Google doesn't actually know for sure the location of every address. So sometimes an address is actually in the wrong latitude and the, and the latitude and longitude, and so sometimes you'll get an error. Um, and so in building the site, um, uh, what, what we found is, is that very often people's query for their writing was wrong. And um, what we did, but it, it took a while to actually get it up, was we have a map of the entire country with um, 
uh, uh, C, uh, C, uh, CML, um, which, which outlines all of the ridings in the country, and you can click on your house on the map, and it will accurately tell you which riding you're in. Um, but we got no help from the government on that. Um, and I mean, just sort of, I, I had a conversation with, with somebody at Elections Canada, and their budget is very, very small. And, you know, I asked for things, and they said, well, maybe in the future. You know, so they're trying really hard, but, uh, but they're, not, they're not there to help get people to the polls, really. Um, no, it's, it's kind of the opposite. Any, anyway, um, so in, in terms of how this fit into my life, um, I'm kind of a recovering film producer. Um, I've spent most of my adult life trying to get films made and living in what's politely referred to as development hell. But I've always been interested in politics. I've always been interested in code. And I've always really loved working with Carmel. And we work together in film. Um, and this opportunity to build this website allowed me to put politics, code, and Carmel all together. And so it's kind of a wonderful, that's how it for me, it happened to work. Um, my background as a programmer is I left film and television, um, I don't know, what was it, seven years ago? I'm going to be wrong. Um, and uh, decided to go back to school, changed completely, went to um, the, the Sheridan has what's called multi, uh, interactive multimedia, and I learned to become a Flash developer. Um, and it took a few years, but eventually um, I I, I got to understand Flash, which is um, a lot like PHP, except for the front end. It, it's, uh, it's very similar, but no server stuff. And got to the point where um, I, I uh, spoke MVC. And finally got to the point where I understood frameworks and how important they were. And uh, then, of course, Flash was no more. Um, and <laughs> so uh, eventually, um, I got to know a fellow named Chris Monson, who I would really say is my mentor. Um, and we built, in I think it was 2013 and 14, a site using a framework called Yi, which is a, quite a nice PHP framework. It's, it's similar to um, Code Igniter or, or Symfony. I mean, you know, but it has nothing, it's nothing at all like WordPress. It's a completely different world. But anyway, this guy's great. Um, so the way. The other thing that, that's happened more recently is um, Rob Ford got myself and a whole lot of people far more actively involved in politics than, um, than we had before. Um, in a backhanded way, yes. Um, I mean, the thing about Rob Ford is that it's not that he's just wacky, it's not about the drugs, but there's a fundamental difference in the way he and his friend Stephen Harper and all of their friends view the role of government and view the world. And we believe that they are fundamentally wrong. Um, and <clears throat> for, for me, um, I, 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 I'm, I'm an American. Um, when I was a child, we lived in Detroit in the 60s. And what we saw was um, government completely ignoring the upkeep of a city and the people who live there. Um, Detroit uh, cut back on their schools. They cut back on transportation. They cut back on everything. Uh, everyone who lived in the city of Detroit who possibly could left, those who couldn't afford to leave burned what was left. Um, and what we're seeing in Toronto right now, there's a famous study by David Holchansky, um, is a city and, and a region that used to be a kind of a wonderful mix of upper, middle, and lower class, living more or less together has become bifurcated into um, rich people living in one area, poor people living in, in another area, and the middle class leaving because they don't want to live with the very poor and they can't afford to live with the very rich. Um, and that's where Toronto is headed. And in fact, that's probably where um, Canada is headed un under Harper. Um, I mean, you know, we can look, you know, violence and destruction is around the corner if you keep going that way. I mean, there are many, ex anyway. Um, so Carmel decided to run for city council in our ward, Ward 32. Um, she had no chance of winning, but the idea was, let's make a statement. Let's talk about these things, because nobody else was talking about it. 
Um, our local counselor I, I, is a fascinating um, example of someone who seems to be very progressive because she's, very, she's all about being green and helping people um, make parks nice. But if you look at parks and playgrounds, if you look at parks and playgrounds in public housing, she doesn't even know they exist. Um, she, she would never go there. It's like, okay, everybody put 40 bucks in and, and, and we'll raise money to plant trees and things like that. Never thinking, well, isn't that why we pay taxes? And then isn't it a whole lot less than 40 bucks a tree? Isn't it like 25 cents each? Anyway, um, uh, when Car Carmel ran and we used a very important piece of software called Nation Builder. And one of the, if you are looking at any kind of political action, organizing anything, this is the classic software to use. It's unbelievably powerful. It has everything from these are the addresses that we need to visit, and these are our supporters along those routes, and he, it'll print out a walk sheet, first one side of the street, then the other. Um, it connects to social media. It can p send uh, people um, text messages. It's incredibly powerful. It also has a, has a high learning curve. So we didn't use it. It's also expensive because they charge you by the size of the database that you're using. Uh, but it's, it's very, very important to know about it if you're involved in, yes? Uh, well, um, the NDP has a custom solution. Um, the conservatives are known to, the conservatives probably do not use it because uh, they have their own custom built, most powerful software in, in, in the country. Um, it was first made famous by Obama. Um, it uses a particular, it's based on a particular method of organizing people. Um, at its core, it's for organizing. It's for finding people who are interested in what you're doing and organizing them to actually go out and campaign and do things in some way. Um, I don't know, I, I really don't know who's using it and who isn't. I don't know what the liberals are using. Um, I don't know. but. Um, it, it was used by pretty well everyone who was running for city council. Um, and obviously, if you're doing something huge, you go to them and you make a deal. Uh, the, um, soon after the civic election, we became aware of an organization called Lead Now. Who's heard of Lead Now? OK, that, that is, I, I assume that this is a select group of people. Um, I, I'm amazed to find four or five people who've heard of it. Um, Lead Now is an organization that does use Nation Builder, um, that uh, was organized to uh, work on the ground in, in 12 ridings across the country where they're trying to get people to vote for the candidate that has the greatest chance of defeating a sitting conservative. Uh, they're working in um, Eglinton Lawrence where um, Oliver is running for re-election, for example. Um, and they're, they're wonderful, and Carmel and I both went to their organizing meetings and got really frustrated. They weren't using Nation Builder well. They didn't follow up. I know I went to at least four meetings and never got a call, and volunteered at every single one, and was never contacted to come back and actually get to work. Um, and Carmel had the same or worse experience. Um, it's, it's not their fault. They don't have much money. Um, Nation Builder has, a, has quite a steep learning curve. And anyway, uh, the other thing we realized is that it's great that they're working in 12 ridings. They're, what about the other 325 ridings? Um, they're raising money now to do surveys, like real professional polling in 30 ridings or 31 ridings, um, so that voters will actually have hard information about who really is in second place, because it's hard to know. But that still leaves 308 ridings where there's no guidance. And outside of ridings that are hot and interesting and covered by big media, um, if you look at small town papers or papers in, in, uh, in, in ridings across the country, you will see sometimes it doesn't, you don't even know that there's an election on. Sometimes the only um, election news will be the visit by a conservative cabinet minister. And if you look at the literature that the conservatives are dropping, it's xenophobic. I mean, it's just, it'll blow your mind. So that, you know, that was a question for us. Um, what, you know, what about, what, what do we do? So we're sitting around complaining to each other. We're very good at complaining to each other. 
Um, and on March 16th, Carmel reached over to the computer and typed something in and looked at me and said, I bought it. <laughs> what did you buy? <laughs> she bought defeatharper.ca. She bought the URL. So then the next question is, what do we do with it? And the question is, what do our visitors need to know? And I mean, just talking from amongst ourselves, we thought, well, people need to know, people who are coming to the site, we, you know, this is this endless debate between the, the two of us. People who are coming to the site, well, they're already predisposed to dislike Harper. But they need to understand how he got 100% of the power with only 39% of the vote. They need to know something about the impact of redistribution, which, mo which is, is a little bit difficult to explain other than to say he's got his hand on the thumb on every single riding. And by re redistributing and cutting off little more progressive polls and sticking them onto an, another riding, um, he concentrates his support. Um, and what is the first pass, the post system, and then trying to figure out how to lay it out so that people will make their way through the site. Um, and we did a little tiny bit of live testing. We have a, a friend in British Columbia who is incredibly politically engaged. Like She's like me. She drives all of her friends crazy because she just talks about politics. And Carmel went to visit her, and she had trouble making it negotiating our page. Um, and certainly when you get to the riding page, because every single riding has their own page, I think we got it wrong because people didn't contribute. And the, the key to the site, the idea behind the site basically is crowdsourcing. Since there are no polls, since press coverage is very, very thin in most ridings across the country, we needed to find a way to give people the information that they needed so that if they wanted to if what they cared about was defeating Harper and they didn't mind whether they voted liberal, conservative, green, brown, yellow, whatever, um, they needed that information. We asked people to tell us about lawn signs, tell us about um, what their friends are doing. Uh, there's, if you look at the site, there's a, there's a poll on there. Um, you know, tell us how you intend to vote. Um, and very few people vote who visit the site. Uh, almost nobody contributes any information. Um, well, we'll just look at it here. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, Carmel's right. I think um, three, five, oh, eight, four. For you developers, this page is too heavy. Um, this is um, what we're looking. I'm just going to tell you what what's here just a little bit, because what what the what the site is mostly is a collection of APIs. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at Google Maps, and then we go to a site called Represent North, that is is uh, makes publicly available an API with all kinds of information about, it, it gives us riding boundaries, which is what, this is this KML, um, and uh, uh, who's running. They, they scrape all the candidate sites or all the sites that they can to get information about the candidates. So we pull this in, um, and WordPress has this wonderful uh, little function that will um, parse the JSON for you, so it was re really easy to um, to, uh, to take this information and display it this way. Unfortunately, uh, their information is incomplete. Um, we tend to have information on the main parties, but as you can see here, we have no link for the Green Party, let alone a, a, an image. And um, actually, the Greens are, it's sort of interesting thing I discovered, um, is that the Greens are not putting every candidate on their main page. And there's got to be a reason for that. Yay, Greens. Um, the next thing we have is, is um, because we found that people weren't taking the survey, so we have these links here that purposely scroll down rather than just take you there so that you know that there's more stuff on the page. Um, and in each region, and regions are Ontario, Quebec, uh, the Maritimes are lumped into one, the Prairies are lumped into one, uh, BC I think is usually lumped, is, is on its own, Alberta's on its own, and the territories are kind of an afterthought. Um, 
So all, all we did was we just kind of looked at polls and said, well, yes. This is not the front page. Well, this is, a, this is the kind of thing I've seen on a lot of pages, even on a home page, right. where there's like a block of information scroll down another. Oh, page yeah. Page um, page. Sure, and sure. Uh, OK. Before. Yeah, I can talk about that. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm a, 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 a lazy coder, designer. This had to be fast. Um, I'm also uh, a devotee of. Um, Responsive website design, and for me, Bootstrap has been a great tool. Am I losing you here? Yeah. Um, boot, bootstrap is a is a is a CSS framework that was designed by um, uh, Twitter, and the and when you use it, um, you are designing for mobile first, so that on a phone, your, your site still works. You know, you can still see everything. Um, and that, that's why a lot of sites are like this. They don't quite have to be. Um, it just depends how much time you have to, to take this tool and um, lay things out so that you're only building one site for the desktop and mobile and everything in between. Does that answer your question? So the reason they stack all their information on one page now is oh, requiring uh, us to scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll is because that's more responsive to mobile? Well, it's easier to build a, a responsive page that, that, but I guess we could have put, we could have broken this down into more pages. And it, pro it, you know, it's, it's, it, that's a really good question and I don't really know the answer. Like we have, this is the main menu on top. Maybe because people didn't make it far enough down. I mean, it's a very serious thing for us. Um, maybe we should have had a second set of menus here that would have, one, you know, one of them would have been about, and the other one might have been candidates, and the other one might have been survey results, and the other one might have been something or other, so that, you know, when you go to Peterborough Kawartha, within that, you know, on that page, there could have been four pages. Um, that might have been a better idea. I don't know, but then you would have had to have hoped that people would actually click through that way. Um, what we tried to do here was to lead people through, in, in our case, um, we, our rationale was to lead people through the site in a way that, stop that, uh, that made sense. That's Google Maps. Um, in, in a way that, that would give them the background that they needed in order to use the site well. Because, not, because we know how many people visit sites and visit the page, and we know how many people take the survey. That's true. Um, and and uh, at, at first, when we first went live, we were worried about security. And we were worried that the survey results were going to get, like people were just going to sit there and click. Um, and so you had to, um, you had to uh, register and log in in order to take the survey and in order to add comments. And that was a major mistake. We really, really, really should have started um, open. And if we had problems, tightened up later. But by not getting, from the very beginning, um, a, a group of uh, uh, kind of a, uh, uh, um, what would you call it, uh, foundation of information. And when people went to the site to see, oh, this is a popular place. You know, people are coming here. I should come back when I have, you know, after I've talked to everybody at work. Um, but there are other things that, um, you know what, let me, just, let me just run through, just kind of do a technical once over, and then we'll talk about strategy. Um, so in, in order to display, display these charts, um, we, uh, I mean, 
I, I use a, a JavaScript charting program, uh, something called newchart.js. And although the charts look really nice and, and they move, um, I think in some ways this, it, it's really heavy. You're loading a lot of JavaScript, and, and we have a lot of charts that each of these charts animate um, when the page loads. And uh, probably we should have used um, um, uh, SVG. Um, and where we can, you know, maybe maybe we should we should have had the server um, uh, create images for for each of the writings and loaded those. Um, but um, uh, we didn't. Um, so th this is this regional stuff. We just pulled this regional information together by hand, and I added it to the JavaScript because it's only something that we'd have to do once a month, and we weren't sure after the site got going if we would even need this explanation of the best results that we get from surveys, from pol polling data, is regional. But information about the province of Ontario doesn't tell you anything if you're trying to decide how to vote in your riding. Because your riding might have, um, uh, the conservatives in first place, and the, the poll might, might have the liberals in first place, and you just don't know. Um, and Carmel can talk about this more, but we, we found more recently that if you, um, there's a guy named Eric Grenier, who is the pollster for the CBC. He operates a site called 308.com, um, and, and, and he, and, and some others, but will make very specific predictions, like I predict the liberals in the riding of Beaches, East York, with a probability of 55%. I want to um, discuss that again. Remember the Tanaka Carlton? Because an example of this is just very early in the stage JavaScript program, but I'm, we're starting to put in just information about all the sites that are out there with definite statistics. And um, they contradict each other. So I thought for the small number of people that are interested in these sites, uh, they should find out what the are. How are we for time? Okay. So, all right. Yeah, yeah here's an example. Um, so, 308.com pres uh, predicts a conservative victory of 50%. Uh, Lispop says it's leaning conservative. Uh, Voxpop says the same, but look how close this is. You know, um, too close to call is saying conservative for sure. Um, election prediction says it's too close to call. Lead now is predicting, and this was from an actual poll, um, conservatives by a wider margin. But the, the spread is, is huge. And, and so basically what that says, if you think about it for one second, is nobody knows. You know, I mean, nobody knows other than you can see that you can be pretty sure that the liberals are in second place. And that if you normally vote NDP and you live in this riding and you really want to get rid of Stephen Harper, that this time you might consider holding your nose and voting liberal. But you don't really know how close it is. Is that the point that? Um, yeah, yeah. They, they tend to agree on the major, which party the race is between. Not always agree on who's in third, but you know, some people will have some solid. Um, yeah. Can you say something about how did you come to choose WordPress in the very beginning? And how long did it take you to actually get this site? Oh, okay. First really good working version of it. Um, uh, to, to just go back a little bit, strategically what we wanted to do was we, wanted to, we also wanted to have something called columnists, which would be people who were politically engaged and active um, in, in their writing and that they would write in a more privileged place, so they would actually have posts. Um, and uh, there would also be comments. I mean, we really wanted to lean very heavily on local input. Um, the reason I chose WordPress was, I mean, the only other experience I had had was with Yi, which I liked a lot. Um, um, but I'd sort of played with WordPress before. Uh, there was a blog, and we knew we were going to do some blogs, and uh, there were a lot of people around, a lot of resources, um, and uh, so I thought we'd go with WordPress. 
Um, I don't know whether it was the right decision. I know that for us, Nation Builder was the wrong decision. I, we, we weren't running a campaign. Um, uh, the WordPress community was really, really nice. Uh, when I went to the uh, local WordPress meetup, and, and you know, there was a huge round of applause, and people wanted to help. Uh, but people are really busy and didn't have time, and we ended up hiring two people uh, to help me with it. Um, one is my friend Chris Monson, and, and the other is um, a fellow uh, named Glenn Tate, who runs, who configured and runs the server for us. Um, Uh, I don't know, <coughs> in retrospect, whether WordPress was, thank you, was the right tool or not. Um, I, I, it's certainly heavy. Um, you know, just uh, uh, it's, it's slower than uh, the more standard CMSs. Um, I, I found that some of the plugins, there are two main plugins that we used. Um, one is something called uh, Types, which we used to create pu custom post types for each riding. And um, although it was nice, um, and it created um, a nice admin interface so that it was relatively easy to add information on the admin side, um, most of that was added through the database directly through an import anyway. Um, and we, but we used something else that, shoot, what's it called? Um, formidable. Uh, formidable Forms, yeah. And uh, Formidable Forms um, was a mistake. I, I don't know about Gravity Forms or any other forms software, but um, when it came to generating those really nice charts and, and pulling the data out from the charts, uh, Formidable Forms um, uh, stores data in a proprietary way. Uh, their API did not allow us in any way to pull the data out that we needed to. So uh, Chris and I stayed up till 3 o'clock in the morning a couple of nights and, and, and wrote pure uh, MySQL queries. Um, to pull it out. Um, I, I, going back a little bit more to, to the WordPress question, I think I went through what most WordPress, people come to WordPress for the first time do, which I was trying to um, submit a URL, parse the URL with a controller and, and, uh, and, and create my pages that way. And I built the site at least three different times until I literally woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning with, it's WordPress. Do it like WordPress. Everything is a post. Yes. And the heavens opened up, and I heard music. And, uh, <laughs> and, and that night, there, there was a WordPress meetup, and everybody at the meetup said, you fool. You should be just doing it the WordPress way. And in fact, when I looked at Formidable Forms and what they were doing, it was like, well, yeah, and somewhere in Formidable Forms, I bet there's a little thing you can check off and say, store everything as a standard WordPress post. And if we had done that, then we would have had the benefit of WordPress queries and their caching and, and that lovely efficiency um, and readability that's attached to them. Um, I mean, I do like left joins. They're my favorite. But, um, and we would have done left joins with <laughs> WordPress anyway. But um, yeah. What is your base theme? What was the theme you started with? Uh, it's called Flat Bootstrap. Flat? Flat. Oh, flat. F-L-A-T. Yeah. And, and we didn't really have to do much with the theme. Um, I mean, you know, there wasn't much that needed to be modified. For it. Yes? Where are you uh, I think it's called My, it's a local Toronto company. I'm sorry, I don't remember. You'll have to ask me afterwards. Um, uh, we, we, we have a virtual private server. You know, we, we're, we're, and, and, um, uh, I have enormous thanks to, to um, Glenn Tate, who provisioned it for us and put in extensive security. Um, there were a couple of times when we were first up that the site would go down and come back up and go down and come back up, and I thought, oh my god, we're being attacked. Uh, but in fact, we just needed to add a little bit more memory. Um, but have it's... Been, have you been attacked? No. I don't think the site ever got popular enough to get on the conservatives' radar. But I think if we did, and we still might, that they will come after us because um, they're incredibly unscrupulous. And you know, things like the law doesn't bother them, so why not attack a server? I mean, geez. Yeah? Did you do any searching and optimization to try to get more popular? Um, at, when we went live, we, we did. We used, the, I think, the most popular SEO package. Um, and the problem, well, there are two things that happened. Um, I mean, we're, we're, I don't think we're fine. 
we, we were not difficult to Google after a couple of days. Um, but the other thing that happened is a few days after we, we went live, Lead Now went live with their site. And their site is great. It's very similar to ours, if, actually, if, if, you, if you visit it, um, except that uh, they're very well known. And so in the little corner of the in in internet that's dominated by politically obsessed Canadian left-wingers, um, Everybody knows about Lead Now, and if you want information about how to vote in your own riding, go to Lead Now. And then if you go to Lead Now, you'll see 30 ridings with some information uh, from their last poll and the rest of the ridings with information from 2011 and a plea to donate to them and to join their campaign. And that's great, but if you live in most of Canada, uh, Lead Now isn't going to help you. And I mean, we, we view ourselves really as an adjunct to Lead Now. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't, our, our initial, okay, so when, when we went live a little early, we weren't really ready because the election was called early. Um, and we also didn't have a really, really solid strategy um, of how we were going to find people for the site. Um, what we did was we we posted on Facebook, there are Facebook sites, like there's one called Crush that has 23,000 members. Um, and they pinned us to the top of their site and that, you know, over those couple of days, we had about 4,500 page views. But we also hadn't unlocked things and I was out of town and Chris couldn't be reached and so loads of people came to the site, but most of them didn't register, didn't vote. And that was our peak. Um, but without fresh information and new reasons to come to the site, um, our numbers dwindled no matter how hard we tweeted, no matter what we did um, with Facebook. Uh, so, yeah. And what we had hoped was that we would have, have had these columnists, local experts, who would have been in place and they would have written some stuff and so that by the time we got to now, when people were more interested and we come to the site, there would be some content there. We were about to do, what was it, a week ago, two weeks ago, we were about to do um, uh, a Newswire release. And uh, we, start, we said, okay, we now have the ability for people to do uh, multiple surveys. God, I didn't talk about that. Um, and you know, the site was finished, it was ready to go, election fever was starting to hit, let's, let's get to the newspapers, let's get to the radio, let's get to TV, let's tell the world, not the little corner of progressives on the internet, because that doesn't help, um, but let's tell everybody about us. And we, uh, through a friend of ours who's an economist, um, got a reference to, and we've been talking about this. Basically, the results on our site if you look at our at the at, at how peop, what peop, when people take our survey, how they vote, um, we tended to be left wing. And I mean, this this riding shows liberal. I don't know, but most of them most of them show NDP, and that isn't necessarily right. And the last thing we want to do is misdirect people. The last thing we want is a site with a bunch of well-meaning left-wing people like ourselves all agreeing with each other. That, that's not helpful. I mean, really what we want is to be able to tell people how to hold your nose and vote for the candidate that's going to beat the conservative. Um, and we just backed away. We were, we were ready to spend about $2,000 in a little more than that in, in, in news wires just, you know, to start that campaign, and we stopped. Yes? Well, this is our site, right? Like what this is, there are two graphs that are meaningful. Um, this is just how people intend to vote the next time with solid choices and leaning. And the next chart down are, and in some ways it's the most powerful. These are people who are voting, changing their vote, who are going to not vote for the conservatives, but instead vote for somebody else. So. You, you lose, the party loses a point on that date. Um, and this, this, this especially, um, like, we, this we just wrote. Um, and and uh, 
So you can see that according to people who have been to this site, that the best choice is the liberals. Because that's, it's people who are changing their vote who can change the government. If everybody votes the same way as they did the last time, we'll get the same government. Yeah. And so that we were going to be very unhelp uh, unhelpful. Now that I'm going through all the polls and seeing that there's at least a consensus mostly on which two parties are in play, um, no consensus on the social rights. I noticed that usually our straw poll agrees with the second place, but not by any means all of us. So you can actually see so many people in the wrong place. Maybe by straw poll, you're talking about people who didn't know about the this is, yeah, this is our, our yeah, our, our straw poll is our poll, which. You know, that writing happens to reflect the, um, the poll. This, this voter survey here, what we're showing here are the results from people who came to this website and took the survey. And this, we thought, would be quite powerful, but what we found in reality is that it's, uh, it's dangerous, that it's wrong. Probably. Yeah, and, and that there's, there's no way for us to know. Therefore, there's no way for people who visit the site to know. So what we're, 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 we're going to revise the site tomorrow. And um, what we're going to do, um, and we're going to run out of time here, so, but it's lunch, so if anybody wants to have lunch with us, we can talk about anything you want. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to take the surveys down. Uh, we may take some other stuff down. And what we're talking about doing is get the two of us sit down every day and look at what the most recent polls are saying, especially riding polls, because there are a few riding polls. Um, look at what the prognosticators are saying. And in about 75 ridings that Carmel chose last night, which are ridings that seem to be in play, although every writing could be in play this time. Um, we're, we're just going to go through and update the data manually every single day. And on every page, and on the home page especially, we're going to have an enormous warning. It's like, remember GeoCities? <laughs> Anybody? It's, it's those sites that flash. It's like all of the polling data, all of the projections, are completely suspect. There is no, nobody has a crystal ball that's going to say, this riding is going to go this way. So if you really want to get rid of Harper, you know, look, look as far and wide as you can. Look out your window and you know, look at the signs uh, at the hamburger joint where you, know, you can get a Harper burger or a Mulcair burger. You know, Ask your friends and very, very carefully make your own decision. Um, they're just, you know, I mean, we, we especially have trouble with 308, which comes across as scientific. Um, but, I mean, from what Carmel has followed of, of the CBC's prognosticator, it seems that there's a definite liberal bias there. And that although his results are supposed to slowly change um, so that they don't bounce around. In fact, they're bouncing around like mad. And he will show, you know, there will be a 25% spread between him and what everybody else is saying. Something is fishy. Um, so just, you know, to be very, very careful. And, and, you know, accurate predictions are, it's an enormous oxymoron. Um, just, you know, just be very, very careful. Um, and don't trust the conservatives. Because, you know, they, the, the only thing we can count on is that they're going to be crafty. And I came up with one kind of countermeasure, but I don't think, any, I, you know, like I'm not going to work too hard on this, which is that, uh, you know, everybody can call, sounding old preferably, uh, call your local conservative candidate and ask for a ride to the polls. And when they call you on election day, confirm that you're there, and then whether you're there or not, it doesn't really matter, but just, you know. Anything, any spanner we can throw in the works is a good thing, but um, I, we're in the middle of this, so that's why I'm, I guess I'm trailing off a little bit. Yes? Do you have enough time to do a site version of this one? 
No. And we, well, we don't, we, it's money. I would love, love to be able to hire somebody to uh, do a, a, a tra translation version. But it would be. Hope not. Uh, are, are we done? We're done. Okay. Thank you. Uh,